Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope you are doing awesome. I've been a little bit AWOL. I, uh, Saturday night, I went to the Promise. Sunday night, I didn't feel well because I was tired. Um, Monday night, I had to go to a meeting, and so I'm here tonight. And we are going to do, I didn't write it down beforehand, but we're going to do Psalms 24. I'm going to clean my desk off today. I did not get that done. Okay. I'm going to do Psalm 24. I do not know what it's in Psalm 24 today. But we will find out today. And that I am going to share with you what I shared today. Uh, it is day 16 of uh, praying for our nation. And so I, I am not as much going by their schedule because I get it later in the evening. I don't get it in the morning. I've just been kind of going with what I feel like God's laid on my heart to pray about, and I've been praying about that. But let's pray first, and then we will get into what I shared today, and then we will get into Psalm 24. This is a salvation message, and I might not be on here very long. We are experiencing rain here. I have everything on battery backup. Everything's unplugged. But just in case, just in case it gets scary, I might just like have to vacate my office and go to a safer location. All right, well, let's pray. God, we just thank you, God. We just thank you for everything that you do, that you are on your throne, that you are in control, God. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I am. You are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. You are our shelter in the storm. You are our strength and refuge. God, there is no God like you. God, you are mighty and magnificent and powerful. You are the righteous judge. You are a loving and kind and compassionate and caring God, and you are patient. You want none to perish. Thank you, God, for calling us as your children. Thank you for loving us. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we just pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they can be saved, God. We pray for a true peace for them. We pray for the prodigals, God. We pray for them to remember the relationship that they had with you, to return, to repent, and to be reconciled once again. God, we pray for all the disasters that are going on. We just pray, God, that you would meet the needs of these people through the hands and feet of Jesus, through the loving compassion of Jesus. We pray, God, for our country. We pray that our country would find joy and salvation through Jesus, God. Jesus is the only source of real joy. And we pray that they would find that through all generations, God. That they may think that what they are doing and what they are saying is making them happy. It's making them joyful. There is nothing that compares to the joy that comes through Jesus. God, we just pray for um, all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. Mm -hmm. We just pray, God, that um, you would be with us and that we would feel your presence. God, just thank you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I've had a little interruption. I'll be right back. My son has brought me, yes, 
most guys know what this is. Yes, the remote. I put it on something so that he wouldn't come in here and interrupt me, but apparently it's not what he wanted to watch, or maybe because of this storm, it's um, it might have gone off. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. He got stuck. He got stuck. And so he was like, uh, oh, it won't do anything. Okay, so let me read for you. I hope you had an awesome day today. I don't know if I said that or not. Um, I hope you did though. I hope it was an awesome day. Hope you had an awesome work day or an awesome whatever day. I I did some things. I actually cleaned out my closet, which Got all my summer clothes out, put it in my other closet, got some of my winter clothes out. It's not really quite winter yet, but anyway, I got a few long sleeve shirts out. That's that's like my winter attire. Long sleeve shirt and a t-shirt. I mean, and uh, well, sometimes a t-shirt over it, but in a jacket. All right, so day 16, praying for our nation. Praying our nation finds joy through salvation in Jesus. I woke up singing this song and message this morning by Phil Wickham. It's a uh, house of the Lord, house of the Lord. Um, I love the lyrics of this song. God wants all people to come to Jesus and accept him as their savior. God puts us here to learn to love him with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. To accept Jesus as our savior, to love others through the love of Jesus to forgive others, and to ask for forgiveness and repent of our sins also. His word is true. True joy is found in Jesus. We are all here to learn life lessons, also through the tests and trials in our lives. There is much testing of faith going on right now. I believe that many people are being tested. Their faith is being tested right now. Um, Sin is being accepted as acceptable to God, um, but all sin is an abomination to God. No one is going to make God accept their sin. They're just not. God wants none to perish, and that is why he sent Jesus as the last blood sacrifice required for sin. Many will perish in their sins when God exacts his judgment. And like our judges here, our court systems, God cannot be bought, compromised, or threatened. His judgment will be swift and just. True joy is found in the ways, true joy is not found in the ways of the world, but in the ways of Jesus. Is Jesus your Savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. We are living in Matthew 24 right now. I believe that. Everything that Jesus said would be going on in Matthew 24 is going on right now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. So that's what I shared earlier today. So let's see what Psalm has to say in Psalm 24. Wow. Okay, it talks about it talks about everything being God's. The King of Glory and His Kingdom, a Psalm of David. So this is another Psalm of David. 
The earth is the Lord's in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, Selah. Okay, well, everything belongs to the Lord. Everything. He created everything. And everybody with his plan and purpose in mind. But he also gave us free will to choose. To choose to follow his ways or to choose to follow the ways of the world. There's only two choices. So it says, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. And I'm going to continue with verse 7. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, um, the Lord mighty in battle. Oh, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up your everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Well, as usual, when I want a study part, there isn't one. <laughs> there is no study part to Psalm 24. But I think it's pretty, ex it explains itself pretty well that everything was established by God and he has founded all things. And in order to stand in, order to stand in his holy place, he wants us to have clean hands and a pure heart. And how you have clean hands and a pure heart is you repent of your sins. You're not ever going to be sinless, but you repent of your sins, which means that you turn from your sins, not that you stay in your sin. You repent of it. You turn away from it. Repent is turn away. Repent is not the same word as forgiveness, like asking for forgiveness. It is turning away from your sin. It's doing a 180. You're going this way. You turn. You go the other way. That's what repent is. Okay. Well, that concludes that. that concludes Psalm 24. So now we need to do a salvation message. Hmm. Which one do we want to use? I like this one. I never can find the little thing, though. It is always running away. It never stays down. It never stays in this thing. I think I do need to clean my desk out. Oh, again. Yeah, I don't know where it is. Let's do this one. God's simple plan of salvation. Because God makes things simple. It's a simple plan. The gospel is really simple. It's not hard. My friend, this plan of salvation saved me. I'm concerned about your soul. You can follow this Bible plan and be saved too. My friend, I'm asking you the most important question of your life. Your joy or your sorrow for all eternity depends on your answer. The question is, are you saved? 
are you saved? It is not a question of how good are you, nor if you are a church member, but are you saved? Are you sure you will go to heaven when you die? God says in order to go to heaven, you must be born again. In John 3, 7, Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. In the Bible, God gives us the plan of how to be born again, which means to be saved. His plan is simple. You can be saved today. How? First, my friend, you must realize you're a sinner, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 Because you are a sinner, you are condemned to death. For the wages, the payment of sin is death. Romans 6.23 This includes eternal separation from God in hell. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Hebrews 9.27 But God loved you so much. He gave his only begotten son, Jesus, to bear your sin and die in your place. He hath made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Jesus had to shed his blood and die. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, Leviticus 17.11. Without shedding of blood is no remission or pardon, Hebrews 9.22. God commandeth his love toward us in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Although we cannot understand how, God said, My sins and your sins were laid upon Jesus, and he died in our place. He became our substitute. It is true. God cannot lie. My friend, God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Acts 17.30 The repentance is a change of mind that agrees with God that one is a sinner and also agrees with what Jesus did for us on the cross. <clears throat> In Acts 16.30-31, the Philippian jailer asked Paul and Silas, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Simply believe on him as the one who bore your sin, died in your place, was buried, and whom God resurrected. His resurrection powerfully assures that the believer can calm can claim everlasting life when Jesus excuse me is received as savior but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of god even to them that believe on his name john 1:12 for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved Romans 10, 13, whoever includes you shall be saved means not maybe nor can, but shall be saved. Surely you realize you're a sinner. Right now, wherever you are, repenting, lift your heart to God in prayer. In Luke 18, 13, the sinner prayed, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Just pray, O oh God, I know I'm a sinner. I believe Jesus was my substitute when he died on the cross. I believe his shed blood, death, burial, and resurrection were for me.
I now receive him as my Savior. I thank you for the forgiveness of my sins, the gift of salvation, and everlasting life because of your merciful grace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Just take God at his word and claim his salvation by faith. Believe and you will be saved. No church, no lodge, no good works can save you. Remember, God does the saving, all of it. God's simple plan of salvation is you are a sinner. Therefore, unless you believe on Jesus who died in your place, you will spend eternity in hell. If you believe on him as your crucified buried and risen Savior, you receive forgiveness for all of your sins and his gift of eternal salvation by faith. You say, surely it can't be that simple. Yes, that simple. It is scriptural. It is God's plan. My friend, believe on Jesus and receive him as Savior today. If his plan is not perfectly clear, Read this tract over and over without laying it down until you understand it. Your soul is worth more than all the world. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Mark 8.36 Be sure you are saved. If you lose your soul, you miss heaven and lose all. Please let God save you this very moment. God's power will save you keep you saved, and enable you to live a victorious Christian life. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Do not trust your feelings. They change. Stand on God's promises. They never change. After you are saved, there are three things to practice daily for spiritual growth. Pray. You like, you talk to God. Read your Bible. God talks to you. Witness. You talk for God. You should be baptized in obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ as a public testimony of your salvation, and then unite with Bible believing with a Bible believing church without delay. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Second Timothy, one eight. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men. Him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. Matthew ten thirty two. So if you did accept Jesus as your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's book of life. And do every day seek God's face through prayer, through praise, and through reading his word. Ask God to send you to a Bible-believing church where you can make your profession public and you can be baptized just like Jesus was. All right. Well, I think I have done everything that I was called to do here today. So I am going to give you God's blessing and I am going to go feed my child He came in here before I started saying that he was hungry. And so I'm going to get off of here and go feed him. Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We all need peace.
We need joy through Jesus also. So let's pray. Let's just do like a generic prayer. I know a lot of people that are sick. I know people that are healing from hurts and are healing physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So let's pray for that. Just going to do a generic prayer. God, we just thank you. We thank you for this time that we can learn more about your word, God. And everything that we see belongs to you, God. Everything that we see is temporary. Everything is borrowed from you, God. You created this whole universe, God. You created every one of us. And we and everything on this earth is just temporary. And we are headed to our forever homes, following Jesus every step of the way, trying to stay with the shepherd so that we can be protected, so that we can be provided for, so that we will know the next step to take. God, we just thank you for your protection and your provision and your blessings. I just pray that on my family. I pray it on anyone that comes on here, on their families, God, that you would give them protection and provision and blessings, God, that you would guide their ways, that you would um, be with them, that they would feel your presence, God. I pray for a healing for so many people that I am thinking of right now, God, and probably some that I have forgotten that were on Facebook, but God, I just lift up every one of them to you right now, God. I just pray that you would heal them, heal them physically, renew their bodies, God. Give them the strength that they once had. God, I just pray that you would um, heal people emotionally, heal them from their hurts, heal them from their disappointments, God. Let them know that you have a better plan and a better purpose. God, I pray that you would heal people spiritually, that you would draw all people that need to be healed spiritually to you, God so that they could heal. And God, we just praise you and thank you for all the many things that you do. We just pray, God, that you would give us the boldness to go out and share your truth and share the gospel of Jesus, that you would give us the strength to stand up for your truth, God, even when it's not popular and even when it's not the way of the world, that we will always stand for truth, God that we will not waver. We will not be shaken, God. We will always be steadfast in your truths. Reading your word every day, learning more and more about you, God, learning more and more about Jesus, learning more and more about the Holy Spirit, God. We just want more of you. That's all we want is more of you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, all right, my Pray and Share Warriors, I will not be here tomorrow night. I will be at youth. I will, should be here Thursday. I should be here Friday. Should be here Saturday and possibly Sunday. So I will, we will keep diving into Psalms and we will keep working our way through that. And it may take us a while to get through it because there's a bunch of them. I think 150 of them and we're on 24. Tomorrow we'll do 25. So we can only do one a day. So it's going to take us quite a while, but it's okay. We have plenty of time unless Jesus comes and gets us. Then it won't matter anyway. All right. We'll have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow, which is Wednesday. And much love. God bless all of, all of you and your families abundantly. Much in cyber hugs. <laughs> I haven't done this in a while. Much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.